Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go over how I converted my daughter's early rider 20 inch mountain bike from having an internal uh, three speed hub to having an eight speed cassette setup. So the re first of all, I want to go over the reason why I did it. Um, we were actually just fine with the internal hub three speed until it started making a lot of noise and eventually completely gave out where she would just pedal and nothing would happen. I didn't know anything about these, but I did go ahead and take it apart. I uh, tried to lube everything up, take it apart, put it back together, and it actually was even worse after that. So I gave up on that idea and just started looking at it and thinking that, you know, I believe that this could be converted to a standard 8, 9, 10 speed uh, cassette, but I knew it was going to be quite a bit of work. I didn't do a lot of great planning on this project. I didn't think about the cost really, and it actually ended up costing quite a bit more than I expected. I'll go ahead and just let you know that. It cost about $160 to make this an uh, upgrade, and that actually includes the fact that I already had a derailleur, so the derailleur I already had. So anyway, I knew of course I would need to change out the, by the way, this is a belt drive as well, the belt drive three-speed hubbed system. Uh, so I knew I'd need to change out the front chain ring and the cranks, which I did. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'll go over some of my concerns, which I have a little bit there as well. So I changed that out, bought some of these relatively cheap ones from AliExpress. I don't remember the price. I'll put it up on the screen. I think around $35. They're actually quite nice. They look really good. They're just, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, so that went good. No problem there. But moving on to the back, it's a little bit more complicated because when you don't have a derailleur, you have a different dropout mechanism. Now this bike had a sliding dropout because it was belt driven and that was how you controlled the tension. In fact, here's the original dropout. Luckily, Early Rider does sell the rear derailleur and I emailed them and asked them, would this part work? And I showed them the part they had on their own site and the, and the guy who answered my email said, yes, he believes it does. And I believe that part cost me $35. I did actually reverse engineer their uh, part just by looking at the picture on their website and using some CAD. And then I 3D printed one just to kind of mock it up to see if it was actually all gonna work and fit together. And as you can see here, it actually did and does. So I ended up ordering the part, got the part, and it, yeah, it does fit nicely. Um, then of course I needed to get a cassette. And in hindsight, I'll, and I might even change this, this is probably a little overkill, this is a 34. And uh, I think that causes a little bit of issues, which I'll go into later. So anyway, I bought the cassette. Of course I bought an eight speed chain bought the um, derailleur hanger. I already had the, um, the derailleur and what else? And of course the biggest thing is the entire hub is a different hub. So originally I was kind of excited because I thought that I had a hub that was going to work, but it turned out it wasn't going to work at all because it didn't have the disc brake mount. Every, everything else would have been fine but it didn't have the disc brake mount. It had the Hyperglide um, hub body on it and everything was, the spacing was right, which is 135 millimeters, but unfortunately did not have the disc brake mount. So that didn't work. Ended up ordering this one on Amazon. It's the Shimano Diora and it cost around $42, I wanna say. So not too cheap. Uh, I could have got another one for around 30, but I thought, you know, I'll spend another 12 bucks and get uh, hopefully a better quality part. So, um, so that brings me to the biggest part of this project, which is the wheel itself. I've never actually built a wheel before. This was my first time building a wheel. So I had to get new spokes and because the hub flange diameter was different than the, uh, one with the hub, with the, uh, geared hub, <clears throat> excuse me, internally geared hub, I needed to also calculate the spoke length. So Park Tools uh, YouTube channel was the savior for that. I watched like all their videos on wheel building, calculated the spoke length, uh, and eventually ordered the wrong size spokes. But that wasn't because I calculated it wrong, it's because at that time I thought I was using a different hub, which of course had a different flange diameter too. Finally, I realized I needed the right hub, so I ordered the right hub, redid all the calculations based on the new hub size, and ordered the spokes, I believe they're 170, 
one millimeters. If you if you need to know that and you're going to build the same thing, just let me know. I can verify that. I believe they're 171, and I was able to get away with them being the same length, both left and right side. Even though, of course, this is a dish tub, being that it has both disc brakes and a cassette. So. I built the wheel and it really wasn't that bad. Probably the hardest part might be just getting that spoke length right. So getting the spoke length right, uh, figuring it out and checking it a hundred times, not really, but checking it a bunch to make sure it was right. It was probably one of the more complex pieces of the, the whole thing, but I eventually got all that set up right and eventually built the, built the wheel and it's actually very nice and true. Maybe we can, Try to take a look here. I mean, maybe it's not perfect, but I was very happy with how it came out. Everything, the tension is good. I believe I have, well, I don't know exactly how many Newton meters it is, but on my, on my uh, tool, uh, I was around 19, I want to say on this side, plus or minus one, and around 15 plus or minus one on the non-drive side. And pretty much got it straight all the way around. I'm uh, just really happy with how the wheel building went. The one thing I did do maybe differently is I didn't do the cross. Uh, well, first of all, I did the two cross. I found that on the 20 inch, the two cross is the most common and probably the best way to do it. Once you go to three cross, your angles start getting kind of weird on the spoke. So I went with two cross, so cross like this, this spoke, for instance, it crosses one, two times, but I didn't interlock it on the, on the second time like a lot of, I guess, more traditional lacing does. I didn't like the idea when I thought about it. I think it's best if they don't touch. And from everything I've watched and read, including the Park Tools videos, they're really saying that it doesn't provide any advantage to uh, to have that that lock. So, or whatever you want to call it, that where they, they uh, the second one goes under there and then kind of locks them together. They're just totally independent and freestanding. And I think that's, I don't know, it just seems like it makes more sense to me not to have kind of um, touching spokes. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, the wheel build came out good. That was actually pretty fun, but of course I had to buy the spokes. I returned the first spokes and I ordered the wrong size because of the wrong hub. Uh, what else? Oh, the shifter. I also had a misstep there. First I got a trigger shifter. Uh, what's the Shimano maybe M310 or something like that. It's actually the one I use on my other bike, but when I put it on here, it really didn't fit very well with this tiny uh, brake lever. It was basically like hogging up all the space and I was like, okay, that's not too good. So I ended up getting this uh, SRAM. No, no, excuse me, is this SRAM? I thought it was a SRAM. Yeah, it's a SRAM. Uh, SRAM, trying to get it in focus. MRX Comp. Yeah, this one works really well. It's shifting through all the gears very nicely. Very clean. Pretty easy. Oops. Let's take a look at it on this side, going through the gears real quick. So that's pretty much it. I mean, the build wasn't too bad. It's more expensive than I thought. Like I said, it was about $160. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention about the uh, rear derailleur. So I tried to use an XT derailleur, which I thought would be more mountain bikey, you know? But the problem is, okay, that's a little too close. The problem with that is, is when you're in the biggest rear cog, Even with this one, the bottom of the derailleur is getting very close to the ground. Now on the other one, it was really close, even closer by, you know, half an inch or so. So I just said that was pretty much going to be unacceptable. Uh, the other concern I have is the chain line. If you see here in this photo, it's pretty extreme on this uh, biggest cog and it's 
pretty good in the middle and on the smallest one it's a little bit not too bad though but this is the only side that's really kind of concerning and when you ride the bike because of course i rode it you can kind of hear it's a little rough I'm, I'm pulling the brake right now trying to mimic that sound it doesn't sound super great so i'm hoping maybe by going with a smaller um big uh gear here so bring it to it from a 34 to a 30 i'm hoping that'll help uh quiet it down just a little bit and make it go into those shifts a little smoother even though actually she goes into them super smooth already the other kind of concern i have is the uh crank length so this is i believe a 127 or 117 i think it's 127 and the other was like 120 so i think I, i'll have to look at the numbers and i'll put them on the screen but i think we're like seven millimeters lower than we were before. I tried to ride the bike and turn it, and I really wasn't able to get too close to a, a pedal strike, but it is gonna bring them down a little bit. They didn't really have the, the same size. I would have had to gone quite a bit smaller if I went down, but um, yeah, so I ended up going with this, and I guess time will tell when, when my daughter starts riding is if that's uh, gonna be an issue or not. One of the challenging things in the build was actually getting all the spacing correct, because Basically, the entire dropouts on both sides do slide, and they even have a little play up and down. So really, I, it took me quite a bit of time to get it as good as I've got it now, which still isn't totally perfect in terms of the spacing between here, between the wheel and the tire and uh, the frame members here, as well as the same thing down at the bottom. You know, I, I do have it quite good now, but it did take some playing with adjusting these little uh, set screws and, and tightening these down just at the right place. Now that it's all said and done and the bike looks, I think, really cool like with this setup and it's working really nice. Time will tell if my daughter likes it or not, but in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do this again. I actually probably would just spend the money, get a new hub, lace it to the same wheel. I'd still have the wheel building experience, but I would just buy a new hub. I don't know what they cost, maybe a hundred dollars or something like that. And then she would have the three speed. I wouldn't have had to spend as much money doing all this stuff. We wouldn't have had the concern of the uh, derailleur being so low. And I actually think she's six years old, by the way. I think that she probably isn't as ready for an eight speed as she is a three speed. So probably in hindsight, if I could do it again, I would just buy the three, a new three-speed hub and install it onto this wheel. Um, but I didn't go that way, and it is what it is, so uh, we're going to see how it goes. I'll give you guys an update either in a video form or even a uh, um, comments down below if she likes it or has any trouble with it, and um, yeah, just keep you guys informed. But Overall, I think it looks cool. Um, there's a couple things I'm gonna do, like chain, maybe change a chain, chain ring. But other than that, I think it's ready to go. I've rode it myself around the block a few times. I was very nervous coming on and off of the curbs, uh, curbs on the driveway, at the bottom of the driveway when I first rode it. But you know, with the wheel, hoping that I did the wheel correctly and everything was gonna be strong. But uh, now since then, I've rode it several more times, you know, getting the shifting right and just trying to mess with everything. Um, and I'm, I'm confident it's very strong now with my weight sitting on it. I'm sure it's fine for her. Well, that's pretty much it for the video explaining how I converted my daughter's three speed to an eight speed. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.